Hi there, I'm Linda and this is Hutton's Valley Permaculture. I don't usually do much planning for my vegetable garden, but with so much summer veg to be planted, planning is what's needed. In today's video, we're gonna go through the garden and I'll show you what preparations I've already been doing, what's still to be done, and then finally come up with our summer planting plan. During the winter months, I mostly let the garden do its own thing. But coming into spring, I really need to start thinking about what I'm planting and where it will be planted. As you know, I love my volunteers, but I can't rely on those for my summer annual garden. This is my main crop garden from which I eat fresh, but preserve a lot for enjoying during the cooler months. It is important to grow all the veg and herbs necessary from my preserving recipes that keep me going throughout the year. So I need to prepare and plan for that planting. I first go through my homemade planting guide to create the list of plants I want in. Then I need to think through the number of varieties of each, like there's about four or five different bean varieties. And finally, I look at the garden and see where I can slot them all in. It's all very roughly planned out and mostly for the main crops. Things like lettuce, spinach, kale, Asian greens, beets, etc. I will put in around all the other plantings. The corner of my garden I call my winter garden will be left to go to seed to promote further plants for next season, but also support birds and pollinators in the garden. One thing to keep in mind is succession. I can get a couple of plantings of some veg during the growing season. For example, with zucchini, beans and corn, I'll often plant a second planting. For the moment, I'll plan to plant them in a vacant spot, but then during the season, after I remove other plants, such as where the garlic's currently growing, I'll plan to plant a second plant. Maybe zucchini, maybe corn. I'll just sort of see how it goes as the season goes on. I have started a few seeds already for cooler season crops that I'll be spreading around. I usually don't plant heat loving things like tomatoes, peppers and cucumbers until the end of November when it warms up sufficiently in the area where I live. So I haven't started those seeds yet, but I'll be starting them perhaps next month. Some preparations for summer that I've already been working on are things like redoing my paths. I do have a whole video on this, so I'll link to that, but it's really important to get plenty of organic matter, not only on the garden beds, but also on the paths, just to retain that moisture to help the garden through a hot summer. Something I've also been focusing on is getting plenty of compost onto the garden beds and then piling up the mulch. Here I've added lots of duck bedding around my garlic plants, but in other areas I've used grass clippings. Using whatever you have on hand is a really great idea just to extend that organic layer, which is really important for keeping the moisture in, but also helping to support the soil and the soil organisms. In some areas of my garden, I've been very busy. In my artichoke, strawberry and asparagus patch, I've brought in lots of manure, and then some mushroom compost and finally put a layer of rotting wood chips on top to really increase that organic matter. Last season, I found that this area dried out a lot. It used to just be old lawn. So I'm still working on improving the soil and uh, adding all of this material is really gonna help. In some areas of the garden, like this onion patch, I've been adding in some of my own homemade compost on top of the mushroom compost. And in other new garden beds, I've just been layering whatever materials I have on top. Here I've added in piles of the grass clippings. What I find is if I can just pile up lots of different organic material, it just improves the soil without using up too much of your, your compost. This garden was my former potato patch where I just had the mushroom compost, a little bit of my compost, but also just layered up things like comfrey and the grass clippings. And now it's really thick with this beautiful organic material. So it takes a bit to get down to the soil, which is kind of down there now. Still coming across these little potatoes. So yeah, getting it nice and thick just makes your garden a lot more resilient. Grass clippings during the spring when grass constantly needs cutting is a perfect addition to these gardens. Knowing what to plant where helps me decide if trellising is needed or desired to use vertical space to increase production. 
beans, melons and squash can all grow over trellises. So I'll definitely be making room for different types of trellis for functionality and also just to add interest around the garden. I hope to be making a few new trellises soon and I'll be sure to make a video on it. Something that I'll have to be doing soon is building some support for some broad beans. Here I'm growing a variety of broad bean I haven't grown before and I'm not sure of the name but a beautiful view of Ruby sent me these seeds from Tasmania so thank you so much for sending me those. I hope to have some structure up fairly soon. Another thing I'll need to be doing fairly soon is getting another patch of carrots growing. Something I've learned during this transition phase from spring to summer is that carrots like to go to seed and they're already starting to send up their flowers. So I'll be growing some more carrots. It's getting warm enough for those seeds to germinate. I'm still trying to perfect the timing of things. I have some snow peas and also a patch of potting peas in, but I definitely need to be adding more of these. And I've already planted some green bean seeds here. It's been fairly warm, so I'm sort of crossing my fingers that that will continue and they will germinate and start to grow. And I usually grow a big patch of bolotti beans, which I save for dried beans. So I'll be saving some of these areas for those. It's probably still a little early for the corn variety I have, but early next month I'll pop these in and see how they go. Another thing I have to do is send a big thank you to Kathy from Little Garden Big Dreams for sending me some pumpkin, melon and flower sleeves along with a beautiful card. Definitely have to get all of these growing. Thanks so much Kathy. I still have a number of beds like this former chili and capsicum patch that I need to renovate. Just add, need to add a lot of compost to this. Remove those plants and get it uh, ready for my summer plantings. Having a wander through the garden and then getting a quick sketch done. I've just kind of put in here what I've already got in, such as the onions, and I've already got a few sort of little beans planted in spots. Um, my carrots are there, future carrots here. I've just sort of popped in a bit of an idea of what I want where. This area is going to be uh, flowers over summer for the the bees and the pollinators. This is my garlic patch, which down the track I'll add zucchini and eggplant to um, when the uh, garlic comes out. And I'll be able to slot in all of these sorts of plants here. I've got snow peas that I'm gonna be putting in fairly soon. And these little dots are a trellising. So I want to be building a few different sorts of trellises. Um, where I can to help support these plants and get that vertical space well used. So having put together a plan, I can add in greens and beets and quick growing crops to areas of the main crop garden with confidence, knowing I can leave space for each. I hope you've enjoyed hearing about my plans and preparations and I hope yours are coming along well. Please let us all know what you're planting at the moment. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Thanks so much for watching and bye for now.